my great delight to introduce, well, to tell you what, our non-fiction second place, Alexander Hamilton Brown, Cox in Cottage County, country, Cox in Cottage Country, and I think Alexander's here today, so I'm going to ask Alexander up to come and read his story for us. Thank you. The tome is not the story. I'll tell you about that later. Okay, I don't know. Maybe I'll just stop the clock a little bit. I've got a very strong voice. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Okay, Crocs in Cottage Country. <laughs> Toronto can be a sauna in August. That Monday morning, in 2008 was no exception. The temperature was 33 Celsius when I climbed the wooden stairs to my film production office in an old brownstone building in Toronto's east side. I just opened the window for some air when the phone rang. It was the thick, guttural accent of Yuri Voronov, a Russian freelance cameraman with whom I had produced a couple of documentaries. Yuri's camera work was excellent, even if his English took a bit of getting used to. He had, uh, he had come from Moscow to Toronto in 2005, and we'd become good friends. Hi, Yuri. You're back, I said. How did things go in Jamaica? Oh, uh, you know I should pilot film about crocodiles. <laughs> he had a plan. Everything okay with filming, but now owner of Croc Farm have problem. They ship 12 crocodiles to Quebec Zoo, but the bloody zoo cannot take them for two weeks. Now they are stuck at Toronto Airport. <laughs> they are in creeks and suffer from heat. If we do not get them out of there, they will die. I wasn't sure what he meant by we. <laughs> Without really thinking that through, I said, well, look, maybe the Humane Society could take them for a short while. No, I already tried them, said Yuri. It would make big trouble. They only handle domestic pets. Can you imagine small dogs and cats in the same area with the 10-foot crocodile? I had to admit, the image was not a pretty picture. The crocs have Red Robinson traveling with them, continued Yuri. They take good care of these crocs. He is expert. There was a pause on the line. Mike... You have barn in your cottage property, no? Straight away, I realized where this was going. Yuri, you're not thinking of billeting those crocs on my place up north, are you? Why not? And Yuri, Quebec Zoo pay all expenses. Red would be with them day and night. In a moment, my lack of judgment must have been bordering on derangement. <laughs> I agreed. So with Red Robinson and Yuri at the airport, the croc wrangler was a tall, powerful looking man with short, cropped, orange colored hair. I guessed he would be in his early thirties. He had a cheerful smile and smoked with a, a deep Texas drone. These animals, said Red, are in a bad way. If you all agree, I'll bring the crops up, the these crops up to your place at night on the unmarked truck. I'll need you boys to help me unload the crates. Oh, God. Call me crazy if you will. In a moment of rash impulse, I said, oh, what the heck, why not? Let's do it. So it was agreed that we should leave that night. Red's vehicle arrived at my cottage just after 2 a.m. When I saw the white truck silhouetted against the black barn, I had an agonizing moment of doubt. Suppose one of the reptiles escaped into a nearby lake. I imagined the headline, local, in the local chronicle. Monster sighted in Silver Lake, terrifies locals, RCMP investigating. <laughs> I thought, God, if the village folk were here, it would end. I know about these crocodiles on my property. This place would become a three-ring circus overnight. But it was too late to have thoughts like that. By 3.30 a.m., most of the crocs were in crates and were unloaded into the cool barn, their muzzles safely bound with biot wire and burlap. But when Red came to unload the last croc, the last crate, he 
you'll have a long drawn out whistle. A pregnant female had laid a clutch of eight eggs inside the crate. Red took the eggs into the cottage and wrapped them in a thick warm blanket. Shortly after that, we were all sound asleep in our bunk beds. Well, later that afternoon, Yuri and I returned to Toronto. It was two weeks before we got back to the cottage. So, how have things gone while we were away? I asked Red. Mm, just fine, he replied. Then tilting his head as if to recall, oh man, and there was one thing. While you were gone, this young kid came prying around the barn, said his name was Ray. Ah, yeah, that would be Ray Delair, I said. Ray was a gangly 16-year-old from the neighboring chicken farm. He tended to be a nosy lad, almost to the point of harassment. The kid, oh, sorry. the kid was at the barn door bend in his neck, trying to adjust his eyes to the darkness. It's awful dark in there, he says. What's that funny smell? Red was still trying to edge around me when I closed the padlock door. So I figured I'd stop him in his tracks. This is Red. And I says to him, I'm going to level with you, son. I'm keeping a few bodies in there. But hey, they'll be gone in a few days. Then he looks at me with his mouth dropping open and gives me this scared looking smile and skedaddles off real quick. That's the last I saw of anyone until the cop came. What? The police have been here? I gasped. Oh, it's okay, he said Red. The officer was just following up on some cockamamie story about there being dead bodies in the barn. <laughs> Well, what'd you tell him? asked Yuri. Well, I figured the best way was the straight way, said Red. So I says to him, look, officer, I've got rare and exotic animals in that barn. They're in transit to Quebec Zoo. When I shows him our animal farm brochure, he reads it, shakes me by the hand and says, no worries, ma'am, and wishes me good luck. Just then, I heard a high-pitched squawking sound coming from the bathroom. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, that'll be the hatchlings, said Red. And there, in the bathtub, were three lively little baby crocs skidding around in an inch of water. <laughs> Apparently, only three of the eight eggs had hatched. That afternoon, Red got a call on his cell phone to say the Quebec Zoo was ready to take the crocs. They have a saying in cottage country, all guests make us happy, some by coming and some by going. <laughs> Red was a great guy, but I must admit, I was a little bit relieved to see his truck drive down off down to the highway. Keeping him company in the passenger seat were the three little baby crocs <laughs> splashing and scrocking away in the basin all the way to the new home in Quebec. <laughs> <laughs>